I have been blessed with valuable correspondence and personal interactions motivated by my search and also the sharing of my contemplations and notes. With some of them, I have even developed a strong connection and some have participated in this channel, like Patrick and John. Recently, I have been having one such amazing email exchange with Tiber, a seeker from Romania. What became clear after a few emails was that I was in the presence of someone I could and would learn a lot from and with. As our back and forth intensified, even with the sharing of uh, poems translated, one by a Romanian symbolist and the other by a Portuguese sort of humanist, I received an email reply from him whose message and clarity was such that I knew I was in the presence of a message that had to be shared. So, obtaining his permission, but not convincing him yet to record his own message, it is my honor to now read to you two contemplations by Tiber, unedited. This, the first one, is about NPCs. The other one, that will be separate, will be about dogmas of falsehood. Our sincere appreciation and gratitude, Tiber. So without further ado, here goes. The character in a game has no idea he is playing the game. He is self-conscious and wanders around in his digital world, so to speak, getting stuck in different stories. Patriotism, capitalism, socialism, religion, sports. He starts the game with pre-installed features, animal instinct as you call them in one of your videos. These features can manifest on their own regarding him using them, like sex, hunger, thermal sensitivity, and so on. So when one of them is ignored, like hunger, for example, the character, self-conscious still, that moment and in control, starts losing it. All he wants is food. He will ignore the sex, the cold, and so on. He can even submit to cannibalism. I like to call them gods. It's obvious that the mythological gods are a projection of our needs, or micro-personalities, as Carl Jung calls them. So the player becomes possessed by a god, and he will want his sacrifice, food, sex, etc. The same happens if a god receives too many sacrifices. He becomes too strong. People who define themselves through one of the gods, or micro-personalities, are a good example, like someone who will tell someone they just met their sexual orientation as if there is nothing else inside. Due to the nature of the game and to the nature of the hardware, the brain, the body, hormones, additional micro-sub-personalities or additional gods can be installed. Cocaine, alcohol, etc that can be just as strong as the pre-installed ones. I think these are what you would call them mind parasites. They can shape the way the player sees the world. They have access to the memories and feelings of the player and they will use them against the player if needed to get their sacrifice. Here is a story to explain the idea. The player who, for the last six months, managed to flip their routine from someone who would eat badly, go to sleep late, smoke, had four coffees in a day, then change it to going to bed early, wake up really early, work his abs for five to ten minutes, read 30, 30 minutes, then shower, breakfast, no coffee, no smoking, no movies. He would have a constructive day and then repeat. One night he dreamed, and in that same dream of his hometown, of his uncle that passed away a few years before, and to whom he was really close, about one of his girlfriends to whom he had acted like an emotional butcher, about the next ex-girlfriend that she abused him physical and emotionally, about a fight he had with his boss in his last job, and how unfair he had been treated by him and by the company. 
Now, our character wakes up upset, angry, thinking about some things he would have liked to say to his boss, thinking about all those people he dreamed about and all he wants to do now is take a break, stay in bed, have a coffee and a joint. And this seems really a good idea at this point. Your story about the ego made a lot of sense. Someone who is either abused by false gods or deprived of any physical joy. So many philosophies about killing the ego. So many negative phrases about it. How can you have such a huge ego? That's why walking the middle road or being a balanced individual seems the best way. Make order in your own house. Going back to the story, a different voice, so to speak, in his head says, breathe, breathe. You stopped working in that company eight months ago, and so did your boss. You are not even in the same city or country, and it's six o'clock in the morning on a regular Wednesday. The dream doesn't make any sense. This reaction doesn't make sense. Maybe just train for five minutes or read and watch a movie if you need. Take some hours off. If the character could see the one holding the joystick, trying to guide him, to balance him, he could call him the true player, maybe even the true god. But the one holding the joystick isn't the true player. The true player is revealed when the game is passed, the console is turned off, the character in the game is reunited with the one holding the joystick, and together they leave the gaming room. There is more to life than just the game, and more than just the gaming room, and the true player is much more than just someone who plays games. For the character in the game, understanding who is holding the joystick, can take the whole game, maybe more than one lifetime, I don't know. But he will never understand what's outside the game or outside the gaming room. Here is when the NPCs come in. When a character keeps ignoring the player, it drifts away slowly. When he keeps listening to the false gods, creating more and more of them, he makes it more difficult for himself to listen, so to speak, to the truth, to the instructions, since his har hardware is limited. It reaches a point when that character has become an extension of his gods, and not an extension of the truth. One false decision after another, until a character ends up saying with a smile on her face, it's moral to have an abortion under any circumstances. It's not even a baby. One lie after another until a character will say, bomb the fuck out of them, they deserve it. Reach a certain point, only a miracle can shake, can shake them strong enough to realize that they took the wrong turn somewhere. I have friends that I grew up with. We had similar lives. He had the same hobbies. Uh, we went on different roads and when I met some of them again last year, I was surprised to see that there wasn't any difference between them. These were three guys over 30 years who lived in Bucharest, one of them being a mid-high manager at the multinational. Between a Spanish news anchor, who, of whom they never heard of, a, a German friend with whom I worked with in the UK, and the Canadian trans or the US mainstream media. They all used the same language the same arguments, the same political ideology. Diversity is our strength, feminism, socialism, and so on. It was like talking to the same person. My friends weren't always like this. They suffered from broken relationships, had dreams, they still love dogs, but they are becoming more and more like the system and less and less as individuals. They all seem obsessed with making order into someone else's house. The system has rules for the characters that are different from the rules of the player. And we can only serve one master at a time. If a character follows for long the rules of the system or ignores the player, who is not the true player but a part of it, becomes like Smeagol, 
and falls in love with its precious. That is the system. That is the false game.